Hey, what's good, Knicks Nation? Alex Gutierrez here, a.k.a. the Tradicaster, here again with another FIBA World Cup update. We had Team USA play Team Lithuania, and we had Team Canada play Team Spain. But before we get into all that, make sure to hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to share all these videos. And if you can't catch us live or you can't catch the premieres, you know what you can do. You can go find us on any audio listening platform, whether that be Apple, Spotify, wherever it may be, and you can subscribe there. Also, make sure to check out KnicksFanTV.com. All right, let's get into these games. Let's start off with Team USA against Team Lithuania. Today, we saw Lithuania come out top as the victors, 110 to 104. It was not a good day for Team USA. From the jump, Lithuania was controlling the glass, and they were knocking down shots at an efficient, an, at an efficient and an effective rate. I mean, when you watch today... You saw that Lithuania in the first quarter knocked down six of six of their three-point attempts. And with that, plus controlling the boards, it made it tough for Team USA to really get into gear and really make this a competitive game until late in the second half, which they had to play catch-up the entire way. But in the first half, in the first half of this game, Team USA was just getting bullied all over the place. I mean, it was 29-12 at one point in the first quarter, Lithuania leading just because Team USA could not make their shots. But getting it, and even going into the second quarter where you had the second unit come in and try to work its way back up and, and try to make this thing competitive, Lithuania was still doing the same thing. I mean, Lithuania was just controlling the tempo, being physical, playing tough defense, made USA have to work for every single bucket. It was really the Anthony Edwards show from the jump that was keeping Team USA afloat for the most part in this game. Um, but... It, it, today was not Team USA's day. It wasn't until the second half where you had guys like Anthony Edwards even dial it up even more. Jalen Brunson starting to make some clutch shots. But even with all of that, it was still not enough to slow down Lithuania where Lithuania was able to come out because you had Nick's uh, stat, uh, draft and stash guy and Rokas Jokobaitis controlling the tempo of this game. Really an efficient player. It's nice to actually watch him play against U.S. competition, some of these guys, and, and play against guys in the NBA because watching Rokas play today was, was, was a treat. But before we get into him and how he played, let's start off with Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart. First off with Josh Hart, today was just not his day. Um, defensively, he was fine. He played 13 minutes. He had one shot attempt today, didn't make it, uh, only had two rebounds. Today was just not Josh Hart's day because the way that Team USA was just down, okay? Kerr, throughout... Most of this game was looking for answers offensively. And that's not really Josh Hart's skill set. He's more of a guy that works off of everyone else's, you know, offense and how they put and how they play, right? Like when Brunson is going, Josh Hart can get going. When uh you see like uh Anthony Edwards gets going, then Josh Hart can get going. But because the offense was so abysmal to start this game, what Josh Hart can do, which attacking out in transition, being that guy that can really impact games as a tertiary option was just not it wasn't needed for today so he didn't really get the shine not necessarily because he was he was horrendous but because he was just his skill sets was just not necessary for what team usa needed so that's where you see kerr go to like halliburton and, and a brunson backcourt while leaving anthony edwards out there going to paul bonchero as well um you see brandon ingram out there getting even more minutes you know you went with mikhail bridges because he's more versatile of a player than what josh hart is uh on on the offensive side so just not josh hart's day getting to our guy captain america jalen brunson not a great way to start off the game offensively. He was missing some of the bunnies around the rim just to begin with, but he eventually did settle down in the second half and started making clutch shots and did what he could to help Anthony Edwards keep Team USA in this game. You know, we got to see what Jalen Brunson does best, which is really get downhill, draw the foul, and get to the free throw line. And he ended the game with 14 points. Didn't necessarily shoot well from the field, Right, as you see, he went four for ten, only one three pointer did it today. But things that you saw from Jalen Brunson in the second half, he was able to control the tempo, which he really wasn't in the first half because Team USA was down. And when your opponent is just up, you're not really trying to you, you try to control the tempo, but it's difficult when your opponent is just getting a commanding lead on you. I mean, at the half, you had Lithuania up 
54 to 37. So there's not really much of a tempo that you can try to control, especially when he's out there. That's more of a half court offense while the second unit is more running and gunning. So for what the first unit is trying to do with Brunson, it's like you could slow it down, but you had to slow Lithuania down offensively, which wasn't working for Team USA. They were just constantly fouling them. Uh, they were Lithuania just had a good amount of time of possession on the basketball where it was it, it was tough for Team USA for that unit to really windle the lead down. Now, like I said, second half, Brunson, the rest of those guys, they were able to cut the lead. They were able to work their way back and make it an interesting game at the end of the third quarter. And going into fourth, it got down to even as little as four points at one point um, where Team USA was in striking distance. But every single time that USA was in striking distance, you just saw them make a mistake, whether that was fouling somebody, whether that was a crucial turnover, um, missing rushing and missing shots. It was just stuff like that where Lithuania was able to maintain that lead, even though USA had opportunities to come out as a victor. But it comes down to those small attention to details where Team USA just wasn't able to do so today ultimately allowing Lithuania to come away with a victory. Now, what I will say for Team Lithuania that was interesting is that, you know, we don't necessarily get to watch Rokas uh, consistently, especially throughout the regular season because we're watching the Knicks. But it was nice to see him today compete against NBA talent. And while his box score wasn't necessarily the most eye-popping, and we can go down here, we can see Yoko Baitis right here. Got you nine, he got nine points, six assists, three rebounds. Um, not necessarily the most efficient shooting day for him. Um, but what I did like from watching, what I did like about his game is that he knows how to control the tempo. He, he does not waste any movements while he was, while he was out there. He's looking for his teammates consistently. He knows when to be aggressive. Uh, th that's just stuff that I like from watching him play today. So for Rokas, he looks like a solid, solid point guard that, you know, that's the, tradi the traditional point guard, not today's point guard in the NBA where you have to be this high level scoring threat, even though there are games where he can do that. But I think for what, but I think for how his play style is like the traditional point guard where you control the pace of the game, you look for your teammates more. So not a lot of wasted movement. I think he's awesome in that regards. I'm curious to see if he ever does come to uh, the NBA and how he's played right now. It looks like a bench. He looks like a bench point guard. Maybe he could be a starter one day uh, if he does to make that, if he does decide to make that decision. But from what I saw today, I thought he was a really good player, really efficient player, uh, just from like a mechanical standpoint of his game. Uh, really nice to watch him play. And then we got to see some former Knicks. We got to see Is Nick Bra Izzy Brazdakis, Ignis Brazdakis go out there and posterize. He posterized Paolo today in the second quarter. That was shocking. He caught a good inbound pass from Rokas and just caught Paolo in the, in the, in the paint. It was, whoo. Some former Knicks having some good days today. Let me tell you that. You even had uh, Kuzmingas out here shooting efficiently. As you see, he had 14 points off the bench, went 5 for 8 from the field, 2 for 3 from downtown, and 2 rebounds, 1 assist. Uh, man, he had 1-3 in the fourth quarter where you saw Anthony Edwards was just in his grill and still knocked down a 3 with the shot clock winding down. It was like, it was a heave. It, it, it was a Hail Mary type shot. But he drained it, gave with the weight of that that extra extra those that three to take on the lead, to get more cushion in that lead, and it was just woof, man, woof. It's shots like that where it was good shooting from with the Lithuania, but there were also some lucky shots today. So for former Knicks, it was a good day for some of them, and then for Team USA, not a good day, not a good day in the office. The thing that consistently you the thing that you can consistently see from Team USA is that. They don't have strong rebounding. I mean, just look at the difference. You had 43 rebounds today from Lithuania compared to the 27 to Team USA. You're just not going to win like that. Um, we know it's been the weak part of USA's game uh, from the jump, but today really showed you where they can struggle against tougher matchups uh, in this tournament. But you know, for Team USA, they can be happy. They move on to the quarterfinals. They they qualified for the Olympics. So whether or not they won or lost this game, they qualified for both of those things. They're set. They're good to go. Uh, so for Team USA, not a great day. 
uh, offensively. But it's something that they can learn from and move forward and go back to the lab and get ready for the quarterfinals. And then we'll see we'll see how they perform in the next round against Italy. Salute to everyone in the chat tuning in right now, wherever you may be. This is Alex Gutierrez, a.k.a. the Traticaster, with the FIBA updates of the World Cup. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to subscribe on all audio listening platforms. And make sure to check out KnicksFanTV.com. Okay. Let's get in to Team Canada because Team Canada qualifies for the Olympics. Made it to the quarterfinals. They're they're excited. You have Dylan Brooks posted on social media, repping his uh, repping his town, his area where he grew up in. R.J. Barrett sharing it on his profile. Team Canada makes it to the quarterfinals and makes it to the Olympics. And looking at this game today, it was a nail biter for Team Canada. And starting it off to help Canada stay in this game, none other than R.J. Barrett. Coming out with 11 points in the first quarter to keep Canada in this one. He was doing all the things that we we're so accustomed to seeing from RJ at this point, which is just getting downhill, finishing around the rim, and then he was knocking down some timely threes. Now, he did shoot efficiently today. RJ did shoot efficiently in this game, but he did start to wane as the game wore on. He was not uh, he was not effective in the second quarter or the fourth quarter. He would ultimately foul out five fouls is all you need in FIBA uh to be fa- to foul out of the game. But for RJ, he had a strong first quarter. It rounded out his 16 points in the third quarter with uh, a shot around the rim and then knocking down a three in the third. But other than that, RJ was quiet for the other two quarters of this game and let's get to the box score right here so you all can see it here you ho- here you go 88 to 85 team canada wins and as we go down let's go take a look at the box score for these guys as you see you have rj barrett going 6 to 12 from the field you got your five rebounds one assist the five personal fouls right there to foul out went two of six from downtown and hit both of his free throws yeah rj had a decent game today. I thought defensively, you still see some of those issues of uh, just him not being able to get skinny around screens and stick with his uh, assignment or at the hip. But, you know, that's something that RJ will work on. We saw him play good defense in the playoffs for the Knicks, but it's just something where he is inconsistent as an overall player, right? Offensively, we saw he didn't show up last game. Uh, more so to me, like I said, in the last in the last update, that was more of like a strategy to Brazil more so than anything else. And then you also have uh, him showing the inconsistencies on offense, defense, like I'm saying. It's it's just RJ's game at this point. That's that's really what it is. But today he had a solid offensive performance. I thought defensively he was up and down. But Team Canada was able to win because you had guys like SGA uh, going off today for 30 points, 7 for 12 from the field, 14 to 16 from downtown. Dude knows how to get downhill and get to the free throw line. He is just phenomenal SGA is just phenomenal but he wasn't the only one to help today you know who else was none other than Dylan Brooks himself dude had a monster monster game today got 22 points 8 to 12 from the field 3 for 3 downtown he had a crucial 3 to tie the game up in the 4th quarter Dylan Brooks was on one today 5 rebounds truly he had a great two way performance today. He had some blocks today. He did a lot. He did a lot of he did a lot of good things today. One steal. It's not all going to show up in the box score of what he did defensively, but Dylan Brooks, truly a two way performance today, was just critical in this win, especially after RJ fouled out. You needed somebody else to show up, and that was none other than Dylan Brooks. Uh, I know for some of you out there, that's not a name that you would necessarily think of, but hey, he did what he had to do today. So for Canada. He had big performances from SGA, Barrett, Brooks, and he had Kelly Olynyk with some heat check threes today and, and and drilling them. That was crazy. Absolutely crazy. You know, for Team Canada, for what they have to do to stay in these type of games is really use their athleticism, play a defensive style of basketball where they can tra- where they can transition from defense into offense in the open court. And today, 
you know, for a team that's not really good at shooting threes, I think as a whole, they're shooting 39% uh, throughout the entire tournament. They shot 45.8% today, as you see, which is just, if you're Canada and you're shooting like that from downtown, you're, you're going to win. You're going to win. As for playing against Spain, who's a tough team, they're very sound. They love to move the rock. They play good defense. They really make you work. Um, just another, it was a gritty game. Very gritty game for both these teams. I mean, can't for Canada to come back the way that they did and, and to uh, to to secure this game and really move on to the next to the next round was just phenomenal. So that's what you get for Canada. That's what you get for Team USA for today. It was. It will be interesting. It will be interesting now for the next round. So we'll see how both these teams perform moving on to the next stage of the World Cup because let me pull it up right here so that way we can see what it looks like. Here we go. So now we go down to the Elite Eight. We go down to the Elite Eight of the FIBA World Cup. And here you see Team USA will be playing Italy. And we have Germany playing Latvia. These are all these are all going to be interesting matchups. You have, hold on one second, just trying to get it on my end, make sure I'm getting all of this right. You have Lithuania playing against Serbia, right up here, and then you also have Canada playing against Slovenia in the next round. These are all going to be good matchups. USA gets a favorable matchup with Italy, in my opinion. They should be able to beat Italy. Canada against Slovenia should be a tough, grueling matchup for Canada. Let's see how they can handle that one. They're going to need another performance like this today to 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 take down uh, to take down Slovenia. It should be a good elite eight between all these teams. So hopefully everyone tunes in to catch this because, come on, it's more basketball, more basketball for us, and we get to watch our guys in the orange and blue play in the next stage. But that's it. That's all I got for today for your FIBA updates. Make sure to, as I always say, make sure to hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to share these videos. And if you can't catch us live or catch the premieres, as I say, you can always find us on any audio listening platform. Also, make sure to check out KnicksFanTV.com. And I'll catch you all later for the next FIBA update.